London has, of course, in the last couple of weeks been enjoying more than its fair share of fog. And as soon as you turn that idea over in your mind, you realise how strongly associated London is with its fogs. I thought I'd better try and track down a fog expert for you, and with great serendipity, it transpires that Dr Christine Corton of Wilson College, Cambridge, also known as Lady Evans, has uh, in this very week brought out a book on that subject. Good luck for her, even better luck for us. Take a deep breath, it's about to get very, very foggy. Hey baby, let me how you raise the... Well, hello, hello. We are in the general area of Hoban, Chancery Lane, and I have ducked in to a modest-looking entrance. In fact, I missed it the first couple of times I tried to find it, uh, so modest it was. And I'm in Gresham College at the Provost's office at Barnards Inn Hall, and we're going to be talking fog. It's a timely subject. In fact, the author of the book London Fog, my guest today, Christine Corton, actually had to bring forward the launch of that because of the climatic conditions here in London. Isn't that right? Yes, I I have to say I can't really say that it's the publicity department from Harvard. Harvard University Press who caused the fog but it was very timely for me. Um, it happened last weekend and I had many journalists contacting me asking me about the differences between the fog that London experienced last weekend and 19th century f- fog. Pea supers, London particular, London Ivy. <laughs> I was leafing through the book, and it really does bring us right up to the present day in terms of some of the e- ecological and environmental concerns that you address. But it also goes way back in terms of the origins, I guess the industrial origins of the the smog as well. Um, there's plenty to unpack, but maybe first of all, I think. It's quite obvious to me through uh, cultural references, through films, a lot of paintings, Whistler and Turner come to mind that the fog and London are heavily identified with each other. And I wondered if we maybe could start by thinking about how that's come about. Yeah, I think uh, one of the premises I I make throughout the book is that Londoners were quite proud of their fog. I mean, obviously, other cities had their own industrial pollution problems. Uh, Edinburgh refers to their old reeky. Uh, Manchester had a huge smoke problem, as did Birmingham, many of the new industrial towns. But my thesis really is that Londoners were proud of their fog. Uh, They identified it as particularly, peculiarly London. So they gave it these names such as London particularly particular, which was actually a London Madeira wine that was imported specifically into London. And it's also a term for a mistress. So it makes it, it's an affectionate term, but something that you don't really want to acknowledge too openly. So Londoners were proud of this fog. It represented for them industrial energy, industrial success, but also the fact that people were in, in employment and could afford coal on their domestic fires. So for them, it had a positive side as well. 